Hi there. So um, I am so thrilled to be here with you today. Um, I uh, want to let you know a little bit about me and um, kind of what we're going to be doing today. And, uh, and then we'll do some really fun breathing exercises. So uh, my name is Dr. Rashmi Shram, and I am actually a board certified family medicine doctor, and I'm also a Chopra certified Ayurvedic lifestyle teacher. Um, and I'm also training to become an integrative health coach. So what that means is that I am lucky enough and um, super grateful to be able to bring in um, these really ancient wisdom traditions, uh, particularly as it deals with um, lifestyle and keeping ourselves healthy into modern medicine. And indeed, a lot of these, um, you know, millennia old uh, practices are now um, being tested and, and we're seeing some really amazing results with, uh, with these tests as well. So what I wanted to um, talk about today in particular is stress and kind of its relationship to our immune system. Um, and kind of when we get through sort of talking about that, um, I thought we could talk um, a little bit about some specifics um, to do with breathing exercises, and then we'll actually do some breathing exercises together. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I am just going to see, oh, hi, guys. There's Jean and Susan. Um, it's so good to see you. I uh, love teaching these classes in real life, uh, and I really miss teaching these at the Y. And so, um, but I, I, I just think it's amazing that we can do this um, and connect with each other, even um, during times of, you know, quarantine. So um, as far as, um, you know, sort of stress is concerned, one of the great places to kind of start with is I'm going to review something that I'm sure that you guys already know, um, which is uh, some things that you've learned already about um, our nervous system, our autonomic nervous system, right? So the autonomic nervous system is um, is something that's automatic. It's, you know, we don't have to think about it. So it's, you know, it, it deals with things like, um, you know, our heartbeat, it deals with, you know, we don't have to tell our lungs to breathe, they already know how to breathe. We don't have to tell our bodies to sweat if we're out and, you know, exercising in the heat. Those things are all automatic. And so the autonomic nervous system, if you remember, is broken down into two kind of main branches. And um, one of these branches is the sympathetic nervous system, which deals with the fight or flight response. And then we have our a parasympathetic nervous system, which is really more the rest and restore response. So, um, and, it, and it deals with digestion as well. So when we have the sympathetic nervous response and or both, and they're both equally important. We need both. Um, and so when we have a, the sympathetic fight or flight response, we tend to have a significantly decreased immune system. In addition to having sort of less blood in the digestive system and things like that, reproductive system. So to help you kind of understand this a little bit, let's just uh, do an example, right? So um, let's say I get in my car and I decide I'm going to go, you know, to the grocery store and I'm on the road and there is this big giant truck that's swerving all over the place. It's in my lane. It's coming towards me at 60 miles an hour. Well, I don't have to tell my heart rate to go up. It already does, right? So boom, that cortisol level goes really high. It's an acute stressor. And all of a sudden my heart rate is really high. My breathing is really, really shallow. And my pupils are dilated. I'm sweating a little bit. And muscles um, really get a lot of blood in them. So blood is shunted from the digestive system. And um, our platelets get sticky because then I can, you know, if I bleed, um, then, you know, I won't bleed as much. And so all of these things are going to help me survive in a fight or flight reaction. And so hopefully, you know, I managed to skillfully swerve, not hit anybody. And, you know, I'm back up on the road and whoo, that was stressful. That's an acute stressor, right? And so it's really helpful to have that sympathetic nervous response because it helps us survive. 
So the problem is, is that most of us aren't really having a ton of these acute stressors all the time. Most of us are experiencing um, smaller dosages of chronic stress. And so, you know, maybe it's that social media post and there it goes. Maybe it's that email. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's homeschooling the kids. Maybe it's obviously the pandemic. So, you know, so there are lots of different reasons for the sympathetic nervous system to be at sort of a higher level than the parasympathetic nervous system. And so what that means is we are really compromising having the healthiest immune system um, and the healthiest digestive system that we can have um, when we're running on kind of this chronic low level of stress. You know, it's very inflammatory. And, you know, just as a doctor, I see a lot, a lot, a lot of my patients suffer from this. Um, and, you know, I, I, certainly I'm not immune either, but you know, we all have stress for sure, but it's really important for us to uh, be mindful of this particular kind of thing that's happening to us and, and, and kind of reroute ourselves, especially if we find ourselves in a kind of a chronic daily stress situation. We know that we're not in the best of health in that way. So one of the things that we can do, and there are lots of different things, I could probably talk about this for six hours, but the why gave me 30 minutes. So one of the things that I thought would be so, so powerful to do was to harness the power of our breath in order to activate our parasympathetic nervous response, that rest and digest, rest and, you know, sort of that really kind of healing response. And that way, you know, it kind of mitigates the sympathetic nervous response, right? So we really want more of that parasympathetic response. And that's really what we're going to be doing today. And um, my hope is after you do these exercises with me, that you'll take them with you. Um, and maybe you already practice some of these. Um, but if you don't, I would love it if you could just kind of make this into your everyday practice. Um, and each time you do it, it's incredibly healing for your body. Right. So um, so let's start with. Um, well, let me see if anybody else has any any ha any questions. Hi, Jen. It's good to see you. I'm so glad to see you guys. Um, so so what I'd like to do first is um, is do um, kind of the basic breath. Right. So this is, um, you know, it's 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 called all kinds of different names. But um, one of the one of the you know ways that I think of it is belly breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. You may have, um, you may have learned it as um, yogic breathing, that sort of thing. It's a really basic, wonderful, amazing breath. So before we do that breath, though, I want to just talk a little bit about why it works, right? So I always like for me, um, if I learn something, that's great. But if I understand why I need to do it and I really kind of get it, it just helps me, you know, be more motivated to be able to do it. Right. So um, to, you know, to understand um, the parasympathetic nervous system, we need to go to kind of it's sort of like it's it's captain. Right. And so and that is um, the single most important healing nerve in our bodies. And that's known as the vagal nerve. And um, so you guys may have heard of it already. Um, there are all kinds of things with, you know, the vagal nerve. Um, and so, um, you know, it's been like 24 years ago since I dissected the vagal nerve because uh, I just had my 20 year um, medical school reunion. But I still remember the vagal nerve. I still remember dissecting it because it was really, really big. Um, and so it's the 10th cranial nerve. It's starts at the midbrain and it has a lot, a lot of branches. And so it innervates the face, it, it, you know, it's got, uh, it innervates the neck, it innervates, um, obviously, you know, it's got some branches in the heart and branches in the lungs. There's a good bit of feedback to and from the diaphragm, right, as well as the intestines. And so that nerve, along with lots and lots of other nerves, are constantly doing this feedback from our mind to our body, back to our mind, and so on and so forth, right? So 
one of the things that is so beautiful about just this simple diaphragmatic breath is we harness the power of the body mind in order to be able to calm the mind. So really we're just using our breath to calm our mind. And we know that it has lots and lots of other downstream positive effects, um, like decreases in inflammation. We know that you know, cortisol levels can decrease when we do this regularly. And we also just feel a sense of calm as well, which is important, especially, you know, during times like this. Um, there, I can't imagine anybody is feeling, um, you know, isn't feeling the effects of, you know, the stress that's coming out of this pandemic. And to think about that, um, that you know, uh, stress levels before the pandemic were really, really high already. So um, there's kind of an, uh, you know, kind of this underlying secondary epidemic of stress is kind of how I think of it as. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to breathe. It's it, we're going to breathe through our belly. I'm probably going to stand up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So, um, what we're going to do is just as I, you know, I'm going to show you how to do this breath, and then we're going to do it together. And then if you guys have questions, type them in there. I think there's a little bit of a delay, but if you guys have questions, type them in. Okay. So I'm going to stand up. And so you guys can see my belly. I want you to go ahead and put one hand, preferably your right hand on your belly, right? And as you breathe in, I want you to fill up your belly like a balloon, okay? And then breathe out and you should be seeing a deflation of your balloon. I'm gonna turn to the side, okay? We're gonna do it one more time, okay? And then we're gonna breathe out. So you're gonna feel that belly come all the way back in, right? So does anybody have any questions about that? What that does is it flattens our diaphragm. And when the diaphragm gets flattened like that, the vagal nerve goes back to our brain and it says, hey guys, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. So you might have, you know, just read the most incendiary email ever and you're doing a couple of these breaths and you're not reacting in that same way that maybe you would have gone back to. And also remember the more we use this, the diaphragm is a muscle. So the more we use it, um, the stronger it gets, right? So um, one of the things I, you know, um, like, you know, what my patients, when I ask them to show me how to breathe or I'll say, you know, I'm gonna show you how to breathe and they're like, I know how to breathe. And so I'll say, you know, um, okay, show me how you breathe. And they'll go, Right. And so that's that's no good because what that's doing is it's using really just the top parts of our lungs, which is how we breathe when we're stressed. Um, then it's only using about 25 to 30 percent of our entire lung capacity. So we want to really use our lungs. We're breathing like 20,000 times a day. And so we may as well make a lot of that count. Right. So what we're going to do, I'm actually still going to stand, I think, because I want you guys to do this with me. So I want one hand on the belly and I'm actually going to do a count for you. So we're going to do four in and then we're going to do four out. We're just going to do um, a few rounds of this in particular, because I think this is a really, really important one to kind of get down and, and correctly. Um, and so it's, you know, it's better if you're um, sitting up. Uh, but you can also lay down for this. In fact, this is something that I recommend that you guys do like right before you go to sleep, for example, it's really soothing. So, um, so you know, if you are, you know, sitting up, I'd like for you to just go ahead and close your eyes. I'm also gonna close my eyes. It just helps to kind of go from activity into a little bit of silence. And um, it can be a great way to just kind of draw your attention inward. Um, and it's a good practice to sort of, um, to sort of get into, right? Okay, okay. Um, so yes, Jen, yes, I, yes, I see your belly goes the opposite way. That's why we got to practice it. It seems easy, but it's not, it's pretty hard, right? Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna be, um, I'm, I'm gonna do this. Okay, is this, okay, good. Okay, I'm just gonna sit here, good, okay? So let's all just close our eyes and deep breath in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. Feel that belly, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. Really should feel like a balloon that's inflating and deflating, in, two, three, four, out, 
two, three, four, right? So there's no reason to hurry when you're doing this. In fact, um, you might actually feel maybe a little bit dizzy if you're not used to doing these kinds of breathing exercises and that's totally normal. Um, but the important thing really is to kind of keep your chest really still and work that belly there, right? So that's really what's gonna be important here is really to feel that belly like you're just blowing up a balloon when you're inhaling and then, and then you know, that belly's coming right back. And so it doesn't mean that you're actually breathing through your belly. Remember, it just means that diaphragm is kind of coming down. And so it's just pushing the contents of the abdomen kind of out. That's really what that means. Does anybody have any questions about this? And it might take you a little bit of practice it, uh, because I know, um, you know, if we have lived under a lot of, lot of stress for, you know, decades, um, like maybe you, Jen, um, then, you know, what can happen is we can just get used to breathing with our chest and um, not necessarily using the diaphragm very much. And it's like I said, just like any other muscle, we need to practice and practice. And that's how it really kind of gets, um, gets really strong. Um, and so remember what this is doing is really kind of going back to our brain and calming down our brain. So you know, let's say your thoughts are going, you know, a thousand miles an hour, you know, like it's not very easy to just say, okay, slow down thoughts. This is, everything's fine. It's no, the thoughts are going to do what they're going to do. But instead we use that mind body connection to get to the mind. We use our breath to calm down the mind. And that's a really powerful thing to be able to do, right? So you getting this, Jen? Okay, I like it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you one variation of this and I'll explain why. Um, and then we'll move on to the other couple of breaths, right? So this is just, in my opinion, if you do only one breath of what we're doing today, this is the most important one that I want you to practice. So, um, so one of the rules in terms of activating that parasympathetic response, the rest and restore response, is your inhalation, should be at least equal to the exhalation, if not shorter, right? So that means that remember how I showed you how, like when I asked my patient how, you know, how he breathes and this is what he did. <sighs> well, you can notice there that the inhalation was a lot longer than the exhalation, right? So that's activating our sympathetic nervous response again. And guess what? We've got plenty of things to activate that sympathetic nervous response. We've got lots of social media. We've got lots of news. We've got lots of stressors. We don't need to kind of activate that any more than it already is. We really need to work on that parasympathetic response, right? So what we're gonna do this time, and we'll just do just a couple of rounds of it, and I want you to do this with me. Um, ask me questions if you have, um, and that way you'll have an idea as to how to do the four and four belly breath. And what we're gonna do next is a four and five belly breath. So if this doesn't feel comfortable for you, just stick with the four and four. But you know, I've been doing this for you know a lot of years, a lot, a lot of years. And so like I actually do a four eight, but that's it took me a long time to get there. And so um, so let's do a four five and see how that feels for you. Okay, so we're just gonna close our eyes one more time. And we're gonna take a deep breath in, feel that belly fill up, two, three, four, and out for two, three, four, five. So a little bit longer there. In, feel the belly fill up, three, four, and out for two, three, four, five. You can open your eyes. Did anybody notice a difference? Was it harder for anyone or were you guys doing, you guys are like pros at this obviously, so that's good. Okay, well, good. So that's that's diaphragmatic breathing, belly breathing, yogic breathing. You can call it kind of whatever you want to, but uh, we'll call it belly breathing to kind of just remember what that's like. And that is just an important, wonderful go-to breath. If this is all you practice for five minutes before you fall asleep, um, you're really gonna activate a lot of the healing response and it, you're gonna generally report better sleep as well. So Jean asked, does it matter if you breathe through your nose or your mouth? Yes, Jean, thank you so much. So I should have said actually that in all of these that it is recommended that you breathe through your nose. So um, there are some practices where you breathe in through your nose and out through the mouth, but for this particular um, kind of breathing, that's a really good question. It's really in and out. 
Okay. Um, and so the next one is gonna, the next breath that we're gonna be practicing that, you know, I wanna teach you guys, and some of you might do this already, uh, but the next one that I want to teach you is uh, called intermittent nostril breathing. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It is called Nadi Shodhana. And so it's referring to, um, you know, basically intermittent nostril breathing. It refers to these energy channels. So it really technically clears out these energy channels. Um, and when we've done scientific studies, on this particular breath, because we're going to be using our, you know, one nostril and the other nostril. When when we've done studies on this, uh, what we've seen is when we're breathing through the right nostril, the left part of our brain is activated, so there's more blood flow to the left hemisphere, and then the opposite is true as well. So when we're breathing in through the left hemisphere, the uh, through through the left nostril, the right hemisphere is getting more um, activity as well. So this breath in particular because we're going to be switching from one to the other is wonderfully soothing. It's one of my absolute favorite things to do. Um, and I definitely do this every single day. Um, and, you know, one of the ways that we're going to um, kind of talk about this is I'm just going to kind of count it out for you. But you can, you know, kind of go at your own pace if you feel like you're, you know, I'm either going too slow or too fast. So um, we're going to use our hands. And so, you know, I know right now we're not supposed to be touching our face, but um, I did just wash my hands and I haven't left my house um, in like, you know, 36 hours. So I did just wash my hands. So if you guys need to go wash your hands or use some hand sanitizer, um, then, you know, I'll give you a minute for that. And while you're doing that, I'll explain something to you. There are different ways that we can do this. There are some traditions where you put um, a certain pressure on the third eye, but we're gonna do a really simple version of this, um, which is gonna involve our thumb closing off the right nostril when I ask you to, and the ring finger closing off the left nostril when I ask you to, right? Does anybody um, have any questions about that? So the thumb closes off the right nostril, and the ring finger closes off the left nostril, right? Okay, so it looks like everybody's good to go with this. So I like to close my eyes. Again, I recommend that you guys do the same because um, it's, a, it's a really powerful thing to just kind of go inward, right? So let's close our eyes and what we're gonna do is take a deep breath in, close off your right nostril, breathe out through the left. Good, breathe in through the left nostril. Close off the left and breathe out through the right. Breathe in through the right. Close off the right and exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close off the left and exhale through the right. Inhale through the right and exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Exhale through the right. Let's finish up there and you can open your eyes. Anybody have anything to say? How was it? This can be a really powerful experience if you haven't done this before. Um, when I've taught some of these classes, um, a couple of folks felt like maybe they felt a little bit dizzy, but that goes away. So if you do feel dizzy, you could just stop doing it. Um, but it should, um, you know, in addition to being really calming, it's also, you know, calming and soothing. But it can also be very harmonizing and very, very healing as well. So this is just a really, really good breath. So um, this breath is called intermittent nostril breathing um, or Nadi Shodhana.
Okay, so the third one, and I was hoping I would have time for this, and I do have some time for this, um, is called Ujjayi breath. You guys have probably heard of this, and you know, if you do yoga, you um, you may have been asked to do Ujjayi breath from time to time, depending on you know what uh, what poses or what the what the purpose of those particular um, you know asanas may have been in in your yoga practice, and so. I'm going to um, kind of show you how this sounds. This is more um, of a of a feeling, more than more than like you know using your breath, you know nose in particular, but you are going to use your nose. Um, is I'm going to um, kind of just come right up to you just to make sure you can hear me. Um, and I want to show you what we're going to do after we take a deep breath in. Is I'm going to close off my glottis there. And what that's going to kind of feel like is um, is is a, an, almost like an ocean. It's also known as ocean's breath or um, uh, or victorious breath. Um, but one thing that we're going to do when I take a deep breath in, and this is a mirror. Let's say this was a mirror. I'm trying to fog this mirror, right? So I take a breath in. Did you guys did you guys hear that hopefully you did hear it um, and what that does is it's a, a, it's amazing it's an amazing breath what that does is it vibrates it causes a certain vibration here and remember I told you the the innervation of the vagal nerve um, and so it um, activates the vagal nerve so um, you know it's uh, not dissimilar to um, vagal nerve stimulators that are used like medical grade stimulators it's a really really powerful um, breath and um, can you know can help you control your heart rate it can help you like I said just kind of set a more uh, calm mindset as well and we all know that we thrive um, health and you know um, certainly mentally as well when when we're in a calmer uh, mindset and so um, what we're, we're not going to necessarily worry about breathing through the belly here. We're just going to kind of just focus a little bit on making this sound, right? So I'm going to do one more round for you. Even though I opened my mouth to show you the fogging mirror bit, the right way to do Jaya breath is really in and out through your nose. Okay, so I'm going to do just one round and then if anybody has questions, you can ask me and then we'll do a few of them together. Okay, so I'm going to close my eyes and just show you one. Right, so Actually, a teacher of mine called it Darth Vader breath, and I thought that that actually is a really good way to think of it too. So um, think of sounding like Darth Vader, okay? So let's do just a few rounds of this so you kind of get the idea of it. And let's close our eyes, and I'm gonna um, let you, you know what, no, let me talk you through this, okay? So let's close our eyes and let's breathe in. Out. In out just one more out and you could open your eyes. Anybody have any questions or comments about the Ujjayi breath? Um, it can also be um, really um, a, a fantastic breath when you're trying to concentrate on something. Um, sometimes I'll just do the Ujjayi breath, um, you know, when I go for a walk. I mean, not when I'm going for a walk with someone because they might be like, what are you doing? Especially if I'm, you know, like trying to talk or whatever. But if I'm, you know, if I felt stressed and I just wanted to go out for a walk um, or it was just a beautiful afternoon and I just want to go out for a walk, then um, then I find the Ujjayi breath is just amazing. It's just a really amazing, calming, calming kind of breath. And um, and it's also just really, really powerful. And so um, I was able to get through the three breaths that I wanted to get through today. And hopefully, if you practiced with me today, you found the innate power that you have <clears throat> in harnessing your breath 
to be able to improve um, that parasympathetic nervous response, which we know it holds the key for us to have a very, very healthy immune system. So we don't want to live in that chronic fight or flight response, that chronic inflammatory response. We really want to try to activate this healing response, which is incredibly wonderful for our immune systems, which you know, during a global pandemic, it's gonna be an important time to keep our immune systems really, really healthy, right? And obviously there are lots of different ways to do that, but this is a really good one that you can kind of go to every day and just spend, you know, five or six minutes every day. Um, set aside some time for yourself in the evening, particularly if you've had a really stressful day, and just spend a little bit of time doing these breathing exercises. And um, the most important one, like I told you, was the diaphragmatic breathing or the belly breathing. So let's say you do this for, you know, four or five minutes. And if you have a little bit of extra time, then practice, you know, a little bit of ujjayi, not too much because it can be really heating. So you do need to be careful. Um, and then, of course, the intermittent nostril breathing, too, that that can be incredibly harmonizing for you, especially in the evenings um, when you really want to try to wind down and invoke kind of that really restful, um, calming, restorative sleep. That's, a, that's also, of course, an incredibly important part of having a, a very, very robust and healthy immune system, right? So um, let me see if anyone has any questions. Um, and if not, I'm just gonna look. Um, and so, um, Jean, good. I thought you good. Good. Hi, guys. Um, it's so good to see all of you here. This is wonderful. Okay, so Portia felt a little bit dizzy or lightheaded. Yep, and that can happen. So just got to take it easy. Um, you know, maybe just do one round of it. Um, and that sort of thing. And Susan, you felt the, the power. Yeah, it is really amazing, isn't it? And it's just really harnessing our own power. So Jean, um, you were asking me how many rounds would you recommend? Oh, for the nostril breath. Yes. So initially, I actually would say just set a timer to just do it for about three minutes, Jean. Um, the intermittent nostril breathing, that's enough for just the initial parts. And, you know, if you feel like it's really helping you, you can kind of go up to five minutes. Um, but really just kind of set a timer because I find it hard to try to remember the rounds of the breath sometimes because I'm like, well, I don't remember if I started in the inhale on the left or the, you know, so it's just better to set a little bit of a timer. And that way, you know, you've put in, you know, your three minutes of intermittent nostril breathing. Um, and, you know, if your timer goes off and you're like, oh, you're in a really good rhythm, you can do it for a few more rounds. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But really the key is to start off like really, really slow and kind of build your way up to it. Because if you just overdo it, you can just feel really dizzy. And that can obviously be some negative feedback from your body. Um, and then you might not wanna do anymore. So you really just wanna take it very, very easy and kind of understand, like I said, the physiology of why we're doing these, right? So when we understand the kind of the you know, the power of these, um, you know, these were, these have been handed down, um, you know, this pranayama has been handed down for, you know, 5,000 years. Um, and, you know, now science is able to validate a lot of these things. And so um, it's a, again, it's a, it's a wonderful melding of, um, of the wisdom tradition with some modern medicine. Um, and so Cindy, good, you made it, fantastic. Jen, I'm so glad you liked it. Um, I think this was so much fun to do. I'd love to do more of these. And so if you guys don't have any more um, questions, I'm going to say goodbye and um, wish you all the happiest of Fridays and an incredibly healthy weekend and a happy weekend, okay? Do some of these breathing exercises, right? Just a little bit every day, just a little bit, just a little bit. Just remember to do these, okay? Bye, guys.